Hello, everyone. I'm Jerry Cho, and today I'm here to talk about something pretty cool: artificial intelligence, or AI. Last year, Google DeepMind's AI AlphaGo managed to defeat the human Go champion Ke Jie from China, three to zero. And for those who don't know, Go is a chess-like board game that requires strategy and quick thinking. Clearly, he didn't appreciate losing to a computer. But I understand. I don't think I ever beat that chess game on my MacBook. But after admitting his defeat, he said that AlphaGo was almost like the god of Go, and what it sees is the entire universe, while all we see. Is a small, shallow pond in front of us. Now, Google didn't stop at this point. They released a new and upgraded version called AlphaGo Zero. And in just 40 days, it proved itself 40% better than Ke Jie, and managed to defeat its previous version 100 to zero. Let me repeat that: 100 to zero. Now, some of you guys may be wondering: So, who cares? It's just a game of Go. Plus, aren't faster computers better for us? But this exponential growth is dangerous. This growth is inevitable. This growth may pose an existential threat on us human beings. And here are three reasons why. Number one, it's speed. Twenty years ago, Dr. Piedhot, a Princeton astrophysicist, claimed that it may be a good hundred years until a robot can beat a human at the game of Go. But it happened last year, and considering that Google's AI was only released six months ago, AlphaGo managed to learn and play superhuman Go in just half a year. Now, how is such superhuman feat possible? Because electrical signals are about a million times faster than our biochemical ones, we can assume that they think about a million times faster than us. To put that into context, say there's a relatively simple AI running for one short week, and the amount of work that it will do in that given period of time is roughly equivalent to 20,000 years of human toil. Now, what does this speed mean? You may ask. It means that we have no chance to control our creations, yet alone understand them. AIs are too fast. They don't get tired. They don't make computational errors, and they for sure don't have to check Facebook every other minute. And imagine if the computers are smarter than us, which at this rate is highly likely to happen. Very soon, they may take over our jobs and forever be in control of us. That sounds exactly like Skynet, and I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to live there. Number two, it's abundance. AIs are already everywhere: your Siri, your Spotify song suggestions, your Google searches, and. We're actually funding new intelligence to study our environment, our economy, our health. So basically, our world. And because they're about a million times faster than us, they will, at some point, have a better understanding of our own world than us. Which means we'll rely more and more on them. But here's a catch. The more we rely on them, the more vulnerable we get. Sam Harris, a Stanford philosopher, said that our current relationship with ants may be very similar to our future relationship with superhuman AIs. See, we don't go out of our ways to kill ants; we just let them be. But if they conflict with our goals, say there's an ant crawling in that cheesecake you've been saving for later. We just kill it without a second thought. 
Superhuman AIs in the near future may treat us with similar disregard. And since AIs have only become a prominent part of our society recently, its ramifications are hard to see. But what we do know for sure right now is that the more we rely on them, the more vulnerable we get. And because we strive for absolute performance, we will inevitably use AIs and face the associated risks. Number three, we don't know how to react to them. Of course, there are people like Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, Bill Gates, warning us of the dangers. And Stephen Hawking even went on to say that AI could be the single worst event in the history of our civilization. But look at our media. Look at our movies. The Terminator series alone generated more than 1.8 billion US dollars. We obviously love death by science fiction. We think it's cool. But it shouldn't be cool. And this is a problem. If we don't even know how to react to them, then how can we possibly expect ourselves to be ready for the consequences? So the solution? Frankly, I don't have one. But I'm here giving you the speech because I believe that our future lives will not exist without AIs. So it is important that we make peace with them. And because AI is cheap, perfect labor, we will, whether we like it or not, use it. And therefore, it is crucial that we know not only the benefits, but also the drawbacks. And through my speech, I hope that you can understand what the AIs are truly capable of and how to coexist with them in the near future. To me, AI seems like a puzzle to solve rather than a tool to utilize. And before we solve that puzzle, it is important that we are cautious, alert, and prudent of this double-edged sword that we have created. Thank you.